Welcome to our video. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and I file a lot of lawsuits under the FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And in this video series, we are just walking through the FCRA section by section. And today we will cover section 1681A, which has to do with the definitions. Not the most exciting stuff in the world, but I will tell you this, if you want to truly understand the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the FCRA, you have to understand the definitions. I see so many people out there that just completely misunderstand the definitions. Some of these misunderstandings are, are kind of understandable and some are just absurd, okay? And we're not going to cover every part of Section 1681A, but I'm going to try to hit what I think are the important parts. And if there's a section or a subsection that I've left out that you want me to talk about, just let me know in the comments and we'll do that. So here we start off with when we're dealing with a consumer or when the word consumer is used in this law, we need to know what that means because it may mean something different under the FDCPA or Truth in Lending Act or RESPA or any number of laws. Here it's very clear the term consumer means an individual, not a partnership, not an LLC, not a corporation, an individual. All right, so what's the definition of a consumer report? And you can see up here we've got consumer report and then what I have in blue is really kind of the, the official definition. So when we're talking about credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, general reputation, etc. And that's going to be used for credit or insurance, primarily for personal, family, or household, employment, or any other purpose authorized under Section 1681B, which, by the way, will be our next video. Because first we did Section 1681, and then this is Section 1681A. The next video will be B, which will talk about when do they have a permissible purpose to pull or use your credit report, which is not exactly the same thing as permission from you, for example, to pull your report. All right, so here's one that I know seems to trip up a lot of people, and it's kind of become this urgent or uh, urban myth or legend here. And I want to address this. And if you want more information, I can show you some case law that, you know, explains this. But look, here's the deal. These are not consumer reports. All right. So it's giving us an exclusion. If we back up one, it's this is what a consumer report is. And it's saying, but look, here's an exclusion. A report containing information solely as to transactions or experiences between the consumer. Remember, what's a consumer? That's the individual and the person making the report. All right, so let's think about this. Here's, here's what a lot of people think. They go, oh, see, this means that no creditor or furnisher, because they provide or, or furnish information to the credit bureau, no furnisher can report me as being late because this says it's illegal. That's completely wrong. All this is saying is if between you and another company, and what's being reported is solely your transactions or experiences, that is not a credit report. Now think about it. If Bank of America, if I have a credit card with Bank of America, and they keep track of when I'm late, well, that report right there is not a consumer report. Now, if they report it to Equifax, that's different. And a lot of people get confused. I get probably once a day somebody come to me saying, well, you know, it's illegal to report information solely as transactions or experiences. It's like, no, this is just saying when it's between you and the company, that is not a consumer report. In other words, that does not meet this definition because it's excluded here. So again, we're not going to spend more time on this in this video, but if you're interested in this, I'll show you, you know, what the courts say about this. All right. So what's a consumer reporting agency? If you sort of keep track here, we are talked about what's a consumer report, then an exclusion, what's not a consumer report. Well, what's a consumer reporting agency? Also, uh, we often call this a credit reporting agency. The technical name here, consumer reporting agency. So regularly engaging in whole or in part in the practice of, we've got assembling, evaluating, or other information, why? For the purpose of furnishing consumer reports to third parties. So 
if we're trying to say some company is a consumer reporting agency, the purpose of them assembling or evaluating or gathering this data has got to be to furnish consumer reports to third parties. If they don't meet that definition, then they are not a consumer reporting agency. They may be something else, but they're not a consumer reporting agency. All right, so what's your file? Your file is all of the information on that consumer recorded and retained by the consumer reporting agency. Now again, if we want to know what a consumer reporting agency is, we back up to here. All right, so one of these things, whoever meets this definition, if they have information on a consumer, remember a consumer is an individual, then your file means all of the information on that consumer, that individual that's recorded and retained by the consumer reporting agency. A lot of times they seem to think this does not apply to them. Okay, and we'll cover this ironically, it's just a coincidence, section 1681G has to do with getting your file. This is also known as section 609. Okay, but we're in section 1681A and then this is subsection G on what your file is. All right, so let's look at this. What about a nationwide consumer reporting agency? So we've talked about what a consumer reporting agency is, but is there something known as a nationwide consumer reporting agency? And the answer is yes. This is under subsection P here. Consumer reporting agency that compiles and maintains files on consumers on a nationwide basis. It's really the same thing, except they're doing it nationwide. Could be public record or credit account information from persons who furnish that information. So those, again, are called furnishers. That would be Bank of America, Midland Credit, Portfolio Recovery, Nation Star, Mr. Cooper, whoever those furnishers are, they're providing information to a company, a consumer reporting agency. If they report nationwide, then they are a nationwide consumer reporting agency. All right, so what's identity theft? So identity theft is fraud committed using the identifying information of another person. And then there's some you know, definitions the Bureau can add to that. But they've tried to make it very broad because, of course, you don't know every single detail or method of identity theft that's going to take place now versus five years from now or 25 years from now. So you're saying, look, it's fraud on the identifying information. So what's an identity theft report? And this is important to know because maybe you're a victim of identity theft. You've sent, for example, a police report or an FTC report to the furnisher and they say, no, 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 that's not good enough. You have to do, you know, 27 other things. Well, let's see. Identity theft report, that means at a minimum a report that alleges an identity theft. So, you know, kind of obvious, right? You have to say, hey, look, my identity was stolen. And then there's an official valid report filed by a consumer. So again, that's the individual. It could be federal, state, or local law enforcement. It could be the Postal Service or any other agency deemed appropriate by the Bureau. And this is key. Whatever you receive from that federal, state, or local law enforcement or United States Postal Inspection Service, it has to be something that if you're lying about this, in other words, if it's really not identity theft, but you're claiming it's identity theft, it has to subject you or expose you to criminal penalties. This is what gives you credibility. Okay, now, do not abuse this. Do not file bogus identity theft reports. All right? And if you do that, you should be prosecuted, okay? Because that harms the real victims of identity theft. But if you are truly a victim of identity theft and you go to federal, state, local law enforcement, you get a report, it says you're a victim of identity theft and it subjects you to criminal penalties, then it meets the definition of this identity theft report. All right, what's a reseller? So now we're in subsection U. Reseller is somebody that's going to take other consumer reporting agency or multiple consumer reporting agencies, take their reports, kind of put them together, and a reseller does not maintain a database of the assembled or merged information. So this is somebody that's going to say, well, look, we'll go pull from this company over here and this company and this credit bureau over here. We'll put it all together and then we'll resell it. Okay. 
this doesn't come up a whole lot in litigation, but it does sometimes, okay? And so we have to know what's the definition of a reseller because you have certain options on whether you can or cannot dispute incorrect information with a reseller. So you need to know what a reseller is. All right, so now we're in subsection X, so these specialty consumer reporting agencies. So nationwide specialty consumer reporting agencies, well, this makes sense, right? It's nationwide. And that's going to be things like medical records, residential tenant history, check writing, employment, insurance. So we see all of these. And you can go to the CFPB website, and they always have a yearly PDF that tells you, I don't know, maybe a hundred different specialty places. So these can be uh, places that track information about your medical history. It's a little odd, but true. Uh, certainly there's a ton of these on residential or tenant history. So they're going to keep a report on you or a file, I should say more accurately, a file on you that has everything about your rental history. You've been evicted. Have you you know, had problems with the landlord, you pay on time. Uh, how about check writing history? Same thing. Employment history. This is huge. So, you know, whether you're going for an actual job or whether you're trying to be, you know, an Uber driver, a Lyft driver, Grubhub, whatever it is, there is a particular company that they typically use that will have all the information about your employment history. Okay. And then there are some that have to do with insurance claims. So instead of tracking, did you pay your Capital One credit card on time? They're going to track, well, how many property damage claims have you had? How many times have you said your house is flooded or burned down? And then that will be used to help decide whether to write you insurance, how much to charge in terms of premium. So these are what are known as specialty and because they're nationwide, they're nationwide specialty consumer reporting agency, all subject to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Okay, so this is our last slide. This is what we'll cover in the next video. So just again, to keep our bearings, we're in 15 USC, which stands for United States Code, Section 1681B, because we just did A, that's the definition, and the one before that, 1681, just gives you kind of the the theory or the purpose behind the law. So we're done with the definitions, at least for the most part. And now we'll move into 1681B, which is permissible purpose. And all that means is, so let, let me take a step back. Here are the players in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. We have the credit bureaus, the consumer reporting agencies. We have the consumer, that would be you. We have furnishers or data furnishers. Those are companies like Bank of America, Capital One, Credit One, Midland, Portfolio, uh, you know, LVNV. They provide or furnish information to the consumer reporting agencies. Well, then we have users. Well, what's a user? A user is somebody who goes to a consumer reporting agency or maybe a reseller and says, I want to buy a consumer report on you, for example. Well, they're called a user because they're going to use your credit report. And there's certain things that they're allowed to do. It's basically for credit purpose, for collection purpose, for employment purposes, uh, insurance. And we're going to see when we get to this section, which will be our next video, at least our next video in this series, <clears throat> this will go into great detail about what those permissible purposes are and please don't be confused by the word. Permissible purpose does not necessarily mean that you give permission. Now, certainly if you give somebody permission, they can pull your credit report. But there are times when, for example, a debt collector can pull your credit report even though you didn't give them permission. So again, don't get confused. Permissible is not the same thing as I give them permission. It just means the law, you could think of it this way, the law gives permission to the user to access, to pull, to use your credit report. That's what we'll cover in our next video in this series. If you have questions, comments, put those below. You know, obviously, if you like this video, want to share it, subscribe, all this, you know how to do the deal on YouTube. So appreciate you watching this, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.